visual side of things. I think art and drawing was one of my first loves. And then of course music. This is something, just another way to express myself. <laughs> is just something that I think always just kind of came easy to folks in our family because ever since I can remember there's been a camera pointed in my face so I know what I look like at every single stage of life and uh, I guess I have my dad to thank for that but later in life when I was able to do it for myself I found it's actually something that I actually quite enjoy. It's just amazing that animals actually have a personality. I mean he's like a little boy. He's our little boy and it's so interesting to see him grow from one stage of life to the next. When it comes to pet photography you want to try to keep the flash to the minimum and actually I tend to just use natural light or if you are going to use light you kind of want to use continuous lighting so it's constant. I mean strobes are cool and everything but honestly for a dog or or, I mean if you even happen to be using this for a cat or something they're easily startled and sometimes it can be distracting they might be doing something really cute in a moment you might have captured but then you have to reset and get them back to being engaged I've used techniques to show him how to look at the camera I've associated with food all about the positive reinforcement so we can capture these moments because he'll never be this size again <laughs> Alright guys, so just real quick for the tutorial piece, I just want to show you how to up your photo game using, um, in this example, a program called Adobe Lightroom. However, I mean, you can do this on your smartphone with certain apps. The concepts still remain the same. You'll see similar terms. Um, up on the screen, you'll see a photo that I take. I uh, took of Disney um, using a 50 millimeter prime lens, uh, 2.8 for the aperture, meaning that was kind of wide open, um, allowing a lot of light to come through. But it also um, allows for that nice blurry background that you see here. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit into the details about pet photography real quick here. Um, as far as the lenses, as far as some of my favorites, I'm not going to get into brand wars. However, um, I would say that the top three lenses for pet photography would be the 24 to 70 millimeter. Um, that allows for some flexibility with it being a zoom lens. Um, with that, um, you, you're able to kind of stand a little bit more stationary with the prime lenses. If you want to change the composition, you physically have to move your feet. And if you have a young dog who's not sitting still, um, you're going to be doing a lot of walking around. So 24 to 70 adds a little bit of flexibility with that range. Also, 35 millimeter prime lens, I wouldn't go below 2.8 for pet photography, but um, definitely that's a great um, aperture uh, for a lens for pet photography. And then also the 50 millimeter, which is what I took this photo in. So this was the raw file that I took of Disney. Um, and I'm going to basically show you how we got here. This is the after, after all of my initial edits. So before, straight raw out of the camera. And I tell you to always shoot raw. When you do that, using that setting on your camera, you allow for the photo to uh, to maintain the vast majority of its dynamic range, which is going to allow you more flexibility when you're using your editing software. So just to recap, I'm just going to hit a few highlights, something specific to pet photography. One of the first things that I did when I looked here, I thought that the highlights were just a little bit um, too much for me. So what I went ahead and did was darken those up just a bit. So you can tell that just from here to here, um, it's a big difference with the highlights sitting at around negative uh, 22. And then I also tackled the shadows and I went ahead and boosted those so you can see the difference the shadow slider makes. So I had it at about 33 um, and that was a good balance for me. Um, and I left the whites alone, but for the blacks, I, I, I lightened those up a bit. And you can see the effects of the blacks with his coat and everything. See if you go extreme, and then again, I settled in right here on 33. Now, I'll get into the presence sliders later, um, but this is something that I like to typically do in the end as a topping. Same for the tone curve. Now, what I do is I go straight down the hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue, saturation, and luminance. You can pick each of these, but I like the HSL slider because it puts them all here together. So what this is basically showing is 
I use the selector tool basically to kind of just show me, hey, what's the color range that this is affecting? Hmm, what is this? Okay, I see the blue and purples are, are, are moving here, etc. So what I want to do is I want to exaggerate his features a little bit. So basically, I took the lighter portion of his fur and I boosted the oranges and the yellows while at the same time decreasing the blues and the and the uh, and the purples, which are the darker portions of his coat, adding a little bit more contrast and just really bringing out um, his fur. Now. After that, I want to show you something kind of specific to pet photography, but also common to human photographs, and that is focusing on the eyes. So as you can see in the before, straight out of the camera, this is kind of a flat image, not much luster coming off of his eyes, but once we edited them, it looks a little bit more polished. And the reason for that is, um, I'll, I'll kind of show you what I did with the brush tool here. Um, this red area is basically showing you the affected areas. and Basically what I did was I boosted the clarity in his eyes and raised the exposure just a tad, just 0.5, um, to add a little bit. And then also on those catch lights, um, on the catch lights in his eyes, I also boosted the exposure just a little bit to add a little shine. So before and after. Additionally, for his, uh, his fur, you can see the red area is the affected area. And essentially, it's something specific for pet photography with all of their fur, you want the details to shine through. So I boost the sharpness by 33 a lot here um, and a little bit of the clarity, not much. You, you can take this too far um, to just add to um, this image. And one of the last things that I did with regard to filters anyway was I added a radial filter. And basically what that is doing, this big circle here, basically everything in here is a filter, so it's not affected. But what I wanted the focus to be on his face. So this red area is showing you what I basically affected out here. So everything outside of his face, I added just a little bit more, uh, I reduced the sharpness. So basically I made it more blurry down here and then I dropped the shadows. Um, so right away, you're just going to gravitate towards the center of his face. And then by boosting the exposure and the clarity in the eyes, um, definitely, hopefully, the the uh, the viewer will want to be drawn to that as well. So that's what I did there. I also lightened the shadows a little bit in his tongue. You can see before, just a little bit dark. And then after, if you want, you could kind of take your time, take this in the Photoshop. You can remove some of this stuff right here or any weird things um, on the photo, like a little bit of his collar and leash are shining through here if that bothers you. Um, but this is just a basic overview of some of the things I do. So in the end, after all those corrections, I go back down um, to my overall presence. I boosted the vibrance just a bit. You can see what difference that makes. Overall, I mean, if you reduce it all the way, it's almost like black and white. Uh, I think I had it at about 19 um, there. And then I reduced the saturation just a little bit. So you can see what happens if you have a little bit too much. So, like so. So that's kind of extreme. So I had it at minus four. There we go. And then I have a save tone curve, but basically, generally speaking, you want to kind of do like an S curve here. Um, this is my Disney point curve, uh, just kind of get him right. And for me, that's it. That's a quick edit. That's what I would do um, to make this photo. And from there, you can just export this image, um, low quality for the internet. Um, it's fine, uh, but definitely you want to look into your settings if you want to print this out. Um, but that's basically how I would edit this photo. Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next tutorial.